So I've just arrived back from Amsterdam where I interviewed a true musical legend. But what's interesting is I was actually as struck by his partner as I was by him. And during the course of this podcast, I'll try to explain that and give you some of the behind the scenes context to it as well. But it was Elton John I was out there to see, surpassed only by Elvis Presley and the Beatles in the American charts, at least, but also able to lay claim to the best selling single of all time, which was the rendition of Candle in the Wind that he performed at the funeral of Diana, Princess of Wales. And like Diana, Elton's more than a celebrity, he's also an activist. He's helped raise an astonishing $400 million for HIV AIDS initiatives alone. And I was out in Amsterdam because he was speaking at the International AIDS Conference. And I was expecting to interview him on his own, but after we landed, his team actually asked that we interview him alongside David Furnish, his husband. And I agreed to that because... I'd learned that David was as much a professional partner as a personal partner to Elton. So I thought he would add quite a lot to it in terms of character, but also in terms of context as well. Uh, The couple, I learned, have a huge amount of people around them. I eventually peeled my way through those layers to find the pair sitting next to each other in the conference center. And remarkably, Elton's suit matched the walls. His sunglasses matched the walls as well. They were purple. And I didn't ask any questions about that, but I did wonder whether the suit came first or the colour of the walls or whether it was all a remarkable coincidence. Uh, But I met Elton. He leaned forward in his chair. He shook my hand. He had a big smile on his face, very welcoming. I was struck by, initially, by uh, how well he looked for his age. He was in his early 70s, but he really doesn't look it. Then I met David, who was another revelation, as I say, his character really filling the room even more than Elton's, brimming with energy and charm. I asked him how the conference had been going, and he lit up, displaying a real passion and expertise on the AIDS issue. And I learned he'd been working on it for two decades in his own right, so he had that expertise in his own right anyway. Um, I hadn't been expecting to interview him, of course, so I was quite surprised by him, I didn't really know what he was going to add, what he was going to contribute, but I immediately felt good about having him there because I could tell that he had clout, even though that hadn't been apparent to me with his previous TV interviews. Perhaps it just doesn't come across on TV. Uh, But once the interview started, I could see why Elton wanted him there too, because David listened really intently to his partner's answers and developed them with his own ideas, but without taking over at all, which is quite a, a difficult line to tread. And the conversation really flowed. Uh, They complimented each other. And when Elton quipped that he might not be around in a couple of years, could have been awkward, but David offered him a a reassuring tap on the leg, which added that character. I wanted to know what drove Elton, though, so I asked him about his fears. And he took me back to the 1980s when his social group was utterly devastated by AIDS. He told me it's because of the people we lost in the beginning so that they didn't die in vain for nothing. And then he went on to say that it's because of his inactivity during the 1980s, because of his drug use and the fact that he didn't do much then. And then he said, then I got sober in the 1990s and I decided to do something about it all. So if the fear driving him is of returning to that life of grief and inactivity, then it explains why HIV AIDS and the epidemic and trying to do something about it continues to preoccupy him in such a big way. Because AIDS actually doesn't have to be the death sentence that it once was if you have access to the right drugs. The problem is that many people just aren't seeking the treatment because of the stigma attached to the disease, which is compounded for members of the LGBT community who fear being persecuted if they come out. This is why Elton and David are so involved. And uh, I actually spoke to David about... um, and Elton about the work that they do with a rapid response project in Ghana, which really illustrates the problem they're facing. In September 2016, they had to take seven people into hiding, would you believe, because they were being sought for rituals and sacrifices. Uh, We do it because we can, David said. Uh, We feel blessed, he told me as a couple. We've lived our lives very openly. We're profoundly affected by the people we lost from the disease. But as a gay couple, we've received a lot of support from society. And they talk about how legislation has changed since they've been together, allowing them to marry, allowing them to have a family and to be accepted. And uh, Elton's fans have been a big part of that, the way that music brings them all together. 
And the family now consists of Elton, David and their two young sons, Elijah and Zachary. And the boys travel with them to events when they're not at school. And they were there behind the scenes in Amsterdam as well. And Elton told me he wanted to spend more time with them, which is basically why he's giving up touring. Music has given me everything, he said, but I actually prefer my kids to music, which was an endearing thing to hear. And he went on to explain how he wants to instill them with a sense at an early age that they have to give back despite their privilege. They've got their own bank accounts and pocket money, he said, and they're expected to divide that money up into spending money, savings and charity. And people are also discouraged from giving them gifts as well. Instead, uh, friends and relatives are asked to donate money to the charities instead on behalf of the children. So it's really there for the kids as they grow up. And at the end of the interview, we were just finishing up and our stills photographer asked David if he would uh, step aside so she could take a picture of Elton on his own and he did so and as he did so he said to me it happens all the time uh, referencing Elton's credibility really as a top selling artist but I think that as Elton does cut back on those musical appearances and focuses more on his parenting and his charitable work then David will inevitably take a more prominent public role next to his husband and we will get a greater sense of David's clout because it's pretty formidable and I think you get a sense of that from my interview so have a look at it on the blog post uh, but he's you know this is a powerful partnership and I think perhaps David's role in Elton's profile is underestimated but uh, that'll become less and less so I think as we move forward so a very interesting you know legend to meet but also a very interesting couple to meet. <laughs>